welcome to the Reconnection Club podcast, the show that helps parents heal troubled relationships with their adult sons and daughters. I'm your host, psychotherapist Tina Gilbertson. Each week, I'll offer you compassion, clarity, and personal development tips designed to help you reconnect not only with your child, but with yourself. Now let's get started. If you've ever asked yourself, what is my child thinking cutting me off like this? Well, this episode is for you. Today, I'll share with you a few things that we know from research about what adult children are thinking when they're estranged from their parents. And although the circumstances surrounding estrangements differ greatly from one family to another, these three basic truths that I'm going to talk about are pretty much universal. So it's important to understand these in the interest of understanding your child, her estrangement, and what you might be able to do to repair it. The first fact that emerges when you talk to people who cut themselves off from parents is that they're doing it not to hurt their parents, but to protect themselves. They're trying to avoid harm of some kind. There's something in the relationship in many of these cases, that either doesn't feel good, or doesn't feel healthy, or doesn't feel right to them. They may feel hurt or disappointed or frustrated in some sense within the relationship. Estrangement is not a cold-hearted decision based on all available information. It's a decision that comes from some form of pain. And of course, that's a hard thing for parents to hear and to to take in, that your child is doing this to protect himself from pain within the context of your relationship. The last thing you ever wanted to do was to hurt your child. And if you're like most parents, you've done many things for the sole purpose of helping your child, providing for him, or trying to make him happy. So it may seem cruel and unusual for your child to walk away after all your efforts just because things aren't a hundred percent the way he wants them. You wonder why the good things you've done don't balance out any mistakes or imperfections in your parenting. But if you remember that estrangement is for self-protection, then you can see that your child's pain is likely more urgent and compelling than any desire to acknowledge what you've done for her. And I've heard of adult children telling their parents how much they appreciate all that they've done, but then turning around and still creating distance. One feeling doesn't cancel out another. Imagine if your favorite person in the world drops a bowling ball on your foot and breaks your toe. You don't choose whether this is your favorite person or your toe is broken. Both can be true at the same time. Your broken toe is no less broken just because you like the person who broke it. And if this person keeps dropping things on your toes and breaking them, no matter how much you like this person, you're going to want to stay away from them, at least until your toes are healed, or until they get some training on how to hold heavy objects without dropping them. This is analogous to estrangement, which is also not the result of just one incident where something got dropped on your child's toes, but is something that brews usually for some time before the person makes the decision to cut off contact. This is all to say that from your child's point of view, estrangement is necessary to protect herself from something that doesn't feel good at this point in your relationship. The second thing to know about what your child is likely thinking during estrangement is this. She doesn't see the problem as existing between you. She sees the problem as existing just within you. From her point of view, it is your behavior that caused and may still be causing the problem. Research indicates that parents are far more likely to view the cause of estrangement as something external to both themselves and the child 
For example, the influence of a third party, or a divorce, or job loss. But the child, when asked, will usually point to the actions or attitude or personality or behavior of the parent. Rightly or wrongly, that is how she sees it. So that is a fact that you need to contend with, how your child sees the problem. So what are the implications of this for your estrangement? Well, it means you've got your work cut out for you just to wrap your mind around this inherent, very personal criticism and the implication that it doesn't take two to tango. It just takes you to create this problem with your child. And obviously that's a nasty pill to swallow because you're human and all of us want to feel like we're good people who mean well. But meaning well doesn't mean you can always avoid doing harm to others. Remember the dropped bowling ball, that wasn't on purpose. And yet, toes can still be broken. Trying to get your child to see that it takes two to create a troubled relationship and to work toward reconciliation, as tempting as that is, it is not a strategy that works well for many people. Your child has already decided that he has no power to solve this problem. He's counting on you to do that so that the two of you can be close again. This has implications for how you might talk about the estrangement. Since your child sees you as the problem, any talk of what we might need to do in order to come together will likely be met with resistance. I've seen draft apologies from parents that include statements like, I hope we can put aside these differences and meet each other in the middle. If your child sees you as the problem, this is not an effective way to reach her. You won't get buy-in with a let's help each other out approach. Even though, as an approach to most relationships, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. Instead, with your child, use I statements to reflect on your behavior in the relationship. Talk about what you're working on and why. That will put you on the same page with your child. The fact that your child sees you as the problem means that the smoothest path to reconciliation is to see if you can find anything in your child's complaints that you can agree with and would like to work on for yourself and then work on those things. Maybe your child would like you to let her ask you if she needs something, rather than you leaping to the rescue whenever she might need help. Maybe he wants to date whomever he chooses without having his choices criticized. Maybe she can't relax around you because of your anxiety, or he feels responsible for keeping you from becoming depressed. Those are just a few examples that might or might not fit for you. Any of them could be both pain points for your child and signposts to changes that you would benefit from as well. Knowing that your child sees you as the problem and therefore you as needing to change something, you have just two choices. You can look where your child is pointing or you can disagree and take no action. What you can't do is to make your child see the problem differently. The last thing I want to tell you about what your child might be thinking is he's not happy about the estrangement. He may feel a sense of relief not having to deal with the problem or problems that led him to step away, but he's not happy that it has to be this way. No one looks forward to cutting their parents out of their lives. Most of us would love to be able to cherish our parents and be cherished by them, if at all possible, throughout our lives. In some cases, it may be that your child has some work to do and that in doing that work, she'll learn to see you more as a flawed but still acceptable and lovable human being. You can't force her to do that work of course, just as she can't force you to do yours. All you can do is to be a role model. The reason I talk about what parents can do to improve the dynamics between themselves and their children is that 
First of all, you're the only factor that you and I have access to. And secondly, as the parent, you have more power to set the tone for this relationship than your child has. You have always had more power to do that, and you probably always will. Knowing that your child isn't happy with this situation any more than you are, and given that he sees the estrangement as a necessary but unfortunate act of self-protection, and that he assumes that only you can make the changes needed for a good relationship, I urge you to use the best tool you have, which is yourself and your will to grow. You can make yourself into an environment in which your child can be comfortable while modeling doing the work to improve yourself and your relationships. What a gift that could be to yourself and to your child. Until next time, remember that you are a loving, lovable, and still growing human being. So please take good care of yourself. Bye for now. If you've enjoyed this episode of the Reconnection Club podcast, I invite you to check out ReconnectionClub.com. The Reconnection Club is for parents at any stage of estrangement from their adult, child, or children. So whether you've just realized there's trouble between you, you've been living with estrangement for years, or you're newly reconciled but still walking on eggshells, the Reconnection Club is your essential resource for information, support, and continued personal growth. With our courses and workshops, expert interviews, monthly Q&A calls, and a friendly, active community, the Reconnection Club is a wonderful place to be for anyone suffering the pain of estrangement from an adult, child, or children. So check it out at ReconnectionClub.com.